When he sailed the ocean blue in 1492, Christopher Columbus was looking for Asia because he wanted their spices. He would have been ecstatic to have landed on the real spice islands, which are a part of present-day Indonesia. Today we learn about Indonesia, a sleeping giant in Southeast Asia. We'll answer the following questions and so much more. What is the Ring of Fire and how does living on it affect the people of Indonesia? What kinds of amazing and well-known animals can be found in Indonesia? Indonesia has more followers of what major religion than any other country in the world? And what kind of questionable behavior did several smaller Indonesian tribes do in the not too distant past? Let me know what you find interesting about Indonesia and what I missed. If you want to know more about our global community, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button. Wake up, get up, stretch my legs, eat some breakfast. Indonesia is in Southeastern Asia, the world's largest archipelago nation. It lies between the Indian and Pacific Oceans. According to the CIA World Factbook, Indonesia is made up of more than 17,000 islands, of which only about 8,800 are named. To narrow it down even more, only about 900 of them are permanently inhabited. I think they're missing an opportunity here. If it costs 20 to $100 to name a star, imagine what they could get for selling naming rights to islands and beaches and hills. It's made up of five main islands, Sumatra, Java, Borneo, known as Kalimantan in Indonesia, Sulawesi, and New Guinea, two major island groups, Nusa Tenggara and the Maluku Islands, and 60 smaller island groups. Sumatra, the sixth largest island in the world, was once covered with thick tropical rainforest, but it has lost almost half of its rainforest in the past few decades due to deforestation. This has led to a number of animals such as the Sumatran tiger, rhinoceros, and orangutan to become critically endangered. Deforestation has also created an unwanted smoke haze over their neighbors, leading to tensions with their neighbors Malaysia and Singapore. The solution? Stop cutting down so many trees. With a population of almost 150 million people, Java is the world's most populated island and it's home to over half of all people living in Indonesia. Java is home to the current capital of Indonesia, Jakarta, the center of the second largest metropolitan area in the world. More on the new capital later in the episode. Indonesia shares the island of Borneo with the nations of Malaysia and Brunei, but controls nearly three quarters of the island. It's home to the Borneo Lowland Rainforest, believed to be the second oldest rainforest in the world. Despite all I just said, the most famous island in Indonesia is likely Bali, chosen by TripAdvisor as the world's top destination in its Traveler's Choice Award. Bali is the only Hindu-majority province in the Muslim-majority Indonesia. Millions go to visit their unique culture, awe-inspiring temples, majestic landscapes, pristine beaches, amazing biodiversity, and so much more. Bali is recognized by many travel guides as one of the most beautiful places on Earth. We can't talk about Indonesian geography without mentioning that it lies directly on the Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire is a region that surrounds much of the Pacific Ocean in its active tectonic plates. It's the part of the world where most volcanic eruptions and earthquakes occur. To make matters worse, Indonesia is smack dab in the center of the most volatile part of the Ring of Fire where three large plates, the Eurasian, Australian, and Pacific just can't stop ramming into each other like they're in a mosh pit. As a result, Indonesia currently has over 150 active volcanoes, the most of any country in the world. The minerals from all these volcanoes and earthquakes do make for some fertile soil, giving it the most abundance of flora and fauna in the world after Brazil. More on that later in the episode. On the downside, some of the biggest catastrophes in human history have also happened in Indonesia, such as the eruption of Toba on the island of Sumatra 75,000 years ago. Theorists believe it may have caused a decade-long global winter and may have cooled the planet's temperature for 1,000 years. The two deadliest volcanic eruptions in recorded history happened in Indonesia. The most powerful being the 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora. Ash from the eruption columns spread around the world and lowered global temperatures in an event sometimes known as the year without a summer in 1816. The resulting climate change triggered extreme weather and harvest failures in many areas around the world, killing an estimated 70,000 people. The 1883 eruption of Krakatoa killed an estimated 36,000. It was heard a few thousand miles away in Australia. It also helped create spectacular sunsets due to the eruptions darkening of the sky worldwide for years afterwards. The sunsets may have even been the inspiration for the red sky shown in Edvard Munch's 1893 painting The Screen, believed to be an accurate depiction of the sky over Norway after the eruption. 
Indonesia was also home to the deadliest tsunami in world history. More on that later in the episode. As mentioned in the beginning of this video, Indonesia is home to the Maluku Islands, better known in history as the Spice Islands. Spices such as nutmeg, mace, cloves, pandan leaves, keluak, and galangal are native to Indonesia. Its fertile soil led it to becoming a world leader in producing many others such as pepper and vanilla. While people have been saving their cash since the invention of money, the first piggy bank was made in the 12th century on the Indonesian island of Java. A large number of boar-shaped piggy banks were discovered at the large archaeological sites surrounding Trolawan, a village in the Indonesian province of East Java. Today, piggy banks are used to teach children to save their money. Many have a rubber plug so kids can retrieve their money while others have to be smashed open. Here, piggy, 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 piggy. While the junk, an Asian sailing ship, is associated with China, there are scholars who believe it came from Java. Historically, junks have ranged in size from small river and coastal vessels to large ocean-going ships, and there are significant regional variations in the type of rig. However, they all employ fully battened sails. Being a nation of islands, the Indonesians have invented all kinds of boats. Most I can't pronounce. One invention I can pronounce is the Tanja sail a type of sail commonly used by Malay and Austronesian peoples allowing sailors to travel against the wind. And the oldest known mention of kites is from the Mesolithic period cave painting in Muna Island in southeast Sulawesi. The painting has been dated from 9500 to 9000 years BC. It depicts a type of kite called Kalgadi, which are still used by the modern Muna people. The fossilized remains of Homo erectus and his tools, known as the Java Man, suggest that present-day Indonesia was inhabited 1.5 million years ago. The current locals, Austronesians, who make up most of the modern population, are thought to have come from Taiwan and arrived in Indonesia around 2000 BC. In more recent times, in the 7th century CE, the Srivijaya naval kingdom inhabited an area bringing Hindu and Buddhist influence with them. Not long after, Borobudur, the largest Buddhist temple on the planet, was built on Java, and it is wonderfully preserved to this day. The temple design follows Javanese Buddhist architecture and is considered one of the great archaeological sites of Southeast Asia. Indonesia's single most visited tourist attraction, Borobudur is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a place of Buddhist pilgrimage to this day. The earliest known evidence of Islam in Indonesia was in northern Sumatra in the 13th century, brought by the Abbasid Caliphate. Evidently, the Muslims spread throughout the archipelago and began exporting Indonesia's abundant and unique spices, a treasure that would draw many foreigners to the archipelago over the next few centuries. Despite the comings and goings of a number of Christian nations in the following years, Islam remains the dominant religion in Indonesia to this day. Locating the source of the lucrative Asian spice trade was a main reason for European exploration. The 1500 saw the Portuguese, Spanish, Dutch, and English race to dominate the spice trade at its sources in India and the Spice Islands of Indonesia. Usually exchanging hands numerous times before even making it to Europe, the price of spice was astronomical. The Europeans needed the spices to preserve and make poorly aged meat edible and to make medicines and magic potions. The Portuguese advantages in navigation and shipbuilding gave them an early upper hand as they arrived in the area during the 1500s. But defeat at the hand of the indigenous Ternateans and the Dutch and Maluku weakened their claim of the nutmeg, cloves, and Cuban pepper they desired. In 1602, the Dutch East India Company arrived, placing the region under the control of the Netherlands for the next several hundred years. Dutch efforts led to the area to become one of the most valuable colonial possessions on Earth. Trust in the Dutch East India Company waned over time, and in 1800, present-day Indonesia reformed under the Dutch East Indies. Native Indonesians eventually decided that 400 years of colonial rule was enough, and in the early 1900s, nationalist movements began to form. The Dutch worked to stamp out the movements, but they encountered a new problem during World War II when Japan invaded and eventually occupied Indonesia. Sukarno and Hatta proclaimed Indonesian independence on August 17, 1945, two days after the Japanese emperor's surrender in the Pacific. Sukarno was proclaimed president and Hatta was made vice president. The Dutch weren't ready to let go of their prized colony, however, and after World War II attempted to take it back. International pressure helped put an end to the conflict, forcing the Netherlands to recognize Indonesian independence in December of 1949. After some difficult years adjusting to a free democratic nation which included poverty, Sukarno in 1957 proclaimed a guided democracy. Things did not improve as planned, and in 1968, the country fell under the leadership of Suharto. 
who held power for 30 years, called a president and seen as a dictator by others, Suharto resigned in 1998. As of today, Indonesia continues to try and grow as a free democratic nation. With about 270 million people, Indonesia is the world's fourth most populous country after China, India, and the United States, the most populous Muslim-majority country in the world. As a people, Indonesia is an ethnically diverse country with around 1,300 distinct native ethnic groups of which over 700 languages are spoken. Unifying such a diverse area is the language of Indonesian, the national language in which four out of five Indonesians can speak. It isn't uncommon for Indonesians to be trilingual, with many speaking their local language, Indonesian, and English as a third language. Most of the ethnicities in Indonesia belong to the Austronesian peoples. There are a number of other groups that are Melanesian, especially in the province of Papua. Papua makes up the western half of the island of New Guinea, the most ethnically diverse island on Earth. The Javanese are the largest ethnic group in Indonesia, making up 40% of the population and are the politically dominant group in Indonesia. To be honest, there are too many interesting smaller ethnic groups to mention them all, but some that really catch the eye are the Korowai of Papua who send out their pregnant women into the jungle to give birth alone. The Korowai also have been living up in tree houses for centuries in order to avoid attacks from rival clans. On a positive note, they don't practice cannibalism so much anymore. The Azmat also stopped practicing cannibalism and no longer headhunt, but in the past, the men needed to hunt for the head of an enemy and offer the body for cannibalistic consumption in order to prove his manliness. This is a man's world! Today, they are known for carving things out of wood. The Bajau tribe, also known as sea gypsies, spend their whole lives on the ocean and can be found on the coast of Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Philippines. Over generations, they have developed the ability to hold their breath underwater longer than anyone else in the world while deep water diving. Being in the water is so important to them that they even deliberately rupture their eardrums at a young age, which doesn't bode well for their hearing, especially as they get older. Why? I could go on forever, but for the sake of time, let's move on to the notable Indonesians. The previously mentioned Sukarno led the struggle for independence against the Dutch and was Indonesia's first president. Replacing Sukarno was Suharto, who rose to power and became the nation's second president in 1967, ruling for 31 years. He was seen by many as a dictator, a name you get when you take power by force, harm those that were against you, and embezzle billions. R.A. Kartini was a prominent Indonesian activist who advocated for women's rights and female education during her short life. B.J. Habibi was the third president of Indonesia from 1998 to 1999. His presidency is seen as a landmark in transition to the Reformation era. Angoon is one of the Asian artists with the highest album sales outside of Asia, with her releases being certified gold and platinum in some European countries. Not known for being a global sports powerhouse, Indonesia does dust the competition in one sport, badminton. Indonesians have won eight gold medals in history, all in badminton. There isn't one distinct national cuisine of Indonesia as much as there are a bunch of regional cuisines. There are dishes that are eaten countrywide, but most have different ingredients depending on where you're eating them. Some popular dishes throughout Indonesia include tumpang, chosen as the national dish in 2014. It's a cone-shaped rice dish with sides of vegetables and meat. Another national dish, nasi goreng, is fried rice that is usually cooked with pieces of meat and vegetables. While there's no single defined recipe for it, nasi goreng is distinguished from other Asian fried rice dishes by its distinct smoky aroma and its caramelized, savory undertones of flavor. Gado gado is a salad of raw, boiled, or steamed vegetables and hard-boiled eggs, boiled potato, fried tofu, and long tong, which is rice wrapped in a banana leaf, served with a peanut sauce dressing. Gotta gotta try that. Despite all I just said, the most well-known Indonesian food is more of a condiment called sambal. It's a chili sauce or paste typically made from chili peppers and other ingredients such as shrimp paste, garlic, ginger, shallot, scallion, palm sugar, and lime juice. There's a lot going on in sambal and it goes on a lot of things. Of course, like most Indonesian food, there isn't one standard recipe for sambal. There are 212 known variations. Let us know in the comments what type of Indonesian food you have had and what you think of it. Indonesia is a presidential republic. As of the making of this video, the current capital is its largest city, Jakarta. 
But in January of 2022, Indonesian lawmakers approved the relocation of the country's capital from Jakarta to a site in East Kalimantan, a jungle area of Borneo, the move to Nusantara, the name of the new capital, will take several years. Construction of the new capital is set to begin in July of 2022. Indonesians gained the right to vote at the age of 17, but if you're married before your 17th birthday, you also have the right to vote. They don't mess around in Indonesia. Polygamy is also legal in Indonesia, though there has been some opposition to it in recent years. The chief of state and head of government is President Joko Widodo, who appears to only have one wife. He has been president since October of 2014. The economy of Indonesia is the largest in Southeast Asia and is one of the emerging market economies of the world. As a middle-income country and member of the G20, Indonesia is classified as a newly industrialized country. It is the 15th largest economy in the world by nominal GDP and is predicted to be the fourth largest by 2045. Indonesia leads the world in production of palm oil and nickel and is second in 10. Tourism is an important part of the economy of Indonesia and it's currently the ninth fastest growing tourism sector in the world. Some of the must-see places in Indonesia include Mount Bromo in East Java. An active volcano, it is the most iconic and most hiked mountain in Indonesia. Raja Ampat, an island cluster in the northwestern tip of Papua New Guinea, is visually stunning above and below the sea. It's home to thousands of different species of coral, fish, and mollusks. Tana Toraja of South Sulawesi offers a glimpse into the ancient traditions and practices of the Toraja people, known for their unique funeral traditions. The town of Ubud in Bali is known for its art and culture. Ubud also has some amazing natural beauty, including the famous rice terraces and the sacred monkey forest. There are millions of Indonesians living abroad, ranging from neighboring countries Malaysia and Singapore to further away places such as Saudi Arabia, the Netherlands, and the United States. The Indonesian Malaysians are also known as a Nakdagan. The Malaysian census does not categorize ethnic groups from the Indonesian archipelago as a separate ethnic group, but rather as Malays. Even non-natives who marry Malays and embrace Islam are also accepted as Malays. Malaysians with Indonesian ancestry include four former Malaysian prime ministers, the most recent being Muhyiddin Yassin, the eighth prime minister of Malaysia and Malaysia's first astronaut, Sheikh Musafar Shakur. Many Indonesians in Saudi Arabia are female domestic workers followed by other types of labor migrants. As of 2014, an estimated one and a half million Indonesians are believed to be working in Saudi Arabia. Indonesia, being the most populous country, also sends the most pilgrims to Mecca for Hajj every year. The earliest Indonesian immigrants to the United States were Dutch Indonesians or Indos who settled in Southern California in the 1950s as refugees. Popular Westerners with Indonesian ancestry include musicians Eddie and Alex Van Halen and Michelle Branch, actor Mark Paul Gosseler and Dutch football great Nigel Dajon. Former American President Barack Obama lived in Indonesia from the ages of 6 to 10 after his mother met and married an Indonesian man by the name of Lolo Sotero. As I mentioned earlier in the video, Indonesia is the second most biodiverse country in the world after Brazil. So it should come as no surprise that Indonesia is filled with countless amazing plants and animals. One animal you can only find in Indonesia is the Komodo dragon. Found only within the UNESCO heritage site Komodo National Park, it is the largest lizard in the world and can only be found on four islands. Growing up to 10 feet long and weighing up to 150 pounds, it is the apex predator within its tiny range. Other amazing animals that you might not realize live in Indonesia are the Borneo elephant, the smallest subspecies of the Asian elephant, the critically endangered crested black macaque, also known as the black ape, and the Javan rhinoceros, though there are only about 70 of them left in the world. The Sumatran tiger is also critically endangered and is the smallest type of tiger in the world. Indonesia is also home to three types of orangutan. On the plant side, the Rafiesa arnoldi, also known as the corpse flower, is one of Indonesia's three national flowers. It is known for producing the largest individual flower on Earth. Native to the rainforest of Sumatra and Borneo, it has a strong and unpleasant odor of rotting flesh. Sticking with large sticking plants, Amorphialis gigas, known as the giant voodoo lily, is also famous for its large size and its horrible smell. As mentioned earlier, many of the world's spices come from or are grown in Indonesia. In the Maluku or Spice Islands alone, there are over 30,000 species of spices grown. 
The 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami, also known as the Boxing Day tsunami, was the deadliest tsunami in recorded history and one of the deadliest natural disasters in the history of the world with a total of 227,898 people dying. It occurred the day after Christmas due to an undersea earthquake that registered a magnitude of 9.1 to 9.3 on the Richter scale, the third strongest earthquake ever recorded. A series of massive tsunami waves grew up to 100 feet high and devastated the coastlines of 14 countries in the Indian Ocean. As we continue to explore the world, my next video will be the first in a series that will be called 10 Amazing Facts. In it, I will be sharing the most interesting things I found while doing research. I'll also identify the best place to visit in each country. First up will be Sweden. Until next time, thank you for taking time out of your day to join us in our global community.